This is Twit. I'd just like to take a few moments since we're sort of at the halfway point here to talk a little bit about safe viewing. So um, a lot of people, are, most people are not going to be in the path of totality. So while we've been raving about how incredible that is, most people are going to be seeing partials. And uh, so in a market like L.A., we're going to see, I don't know, 45 percent or something. And of course, you go on Amazon, you see Eclipse glasses, and they're sold there by the thousands. Some are okay, some are not okay. And after the 2017 Eclipse, we started getting reports, which is something I hadn't really heard much of before. In the past, when I was a kid, you'd see people trying things like, you know, wearing a welding mask, which will not work, uh, will not protect you anyway, or stacking up sunglasses, which will not protect you. But now we have companies online selling uh, many, many of them drop shipping these uh, glasses that are, for the most part, imported from China that say ISO approved. They also say NASA approved, and NASA is not in the business of approving eclipse glasses. So um, I just want to impress on people the importance as a person who had cataracts in his 40s from viewing the sun improperly. I want to impress on people the importance of getting good ones and how to tell the good from the bad. And then maybe um, you could talk about some of the other ways, you know, that you could see the partial effect by standing under a tree and seeing all the little partial eclipses on the ground around you, or even just making a fist and making a pinhole. Well, you know, uh, first of all, it, it is important to get the right type of eclipse glasses. I have been doing over the last uh, six weeks, virtual talks about the upcoming eclipse and uh, at libraries and civic groups. I'm very happy to say that just about every library that I uh, serviced said that they had been giving out eclipse glasses because the AAS, the American Astronomical Society, through a grant has been able to distribute literally thousands oh. of these glasses to libraries and civic groups. And I have an example of this right here. Uh, this is a, a, a clip class that was being given out by my own library in Putnam Valley, New York. And the important thing to note about these is that you need to find what are called the ISO number. Right. Uh, that That is a certification, as you can see. Uh, I believe the number on all of these glasses is uh, something like one, two, three, four. I can't even, I need my, my magnifying lens to read It's, it it's like five digits, yeah. But that, one, two, that's one, actually... That's very good to know because I was one of the things I was concerned about was if, uh, for instance, L.A. County Library, you know, they're not experts in buying these things. So I didn't realize AAS was doing it. So that's good to know that these are actually coming from a reputable it's, source. It's been, it's been a wonderful thing. And they have been mm -hmm. uh, and and some libraries, I mean, my own library had put an order in a long time ago and they thought that they were never going to get it. And then like a couple of days before I was going to give my talk, uh, the head librarian came, called me up and said, we're so excited. We finally got them 500, <laughs> 500 uh, glasses. And I talked to her a little while ago, just about a day or two ago. And she said, all gone. I mean, they, <laughs> these glasses are going really fast and watch out for the scalpers, by the way. Right. I, I remember back in 2017, a couple of days before the eclipse, there were people online who said, Hey, you want to see the eclipse? You want eclipse glasses? We'll be very happy to get 20 bucks. I mean, these glasses that I'm holding here probably don't cost much more than a buck or two at most. But uh, again, people will get very desperate and they will actually buy uh, buy these glasses. In fact, there's a comic strip. I don't know if it's in your newspaper, uh, Rod, or maybe our, our viewers or listeners have it. It's called Crankshaft. Uh, <laughs> Crankshaft is a comic strip character who drives a school bus uh, normally all during this week before the eclipse. They've been playing up the fact that Crankshaft has bought gazillions of these glasses and he's going to now charge three and four times more than what he paid for them and he's open oh he's offering to have people sleep in his basement he, and 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 he's gonna uh he has outhouses in his backyard he's gonna put holes in the roof so that people can look at the eclipse while they're doing their thing i mean uh <laughs> but you laugh but there are probably people out there uh who actually will try to do this who will try to make as much money as they possibly can off of this while uh this is uh uh, a major event and, and still alive and kicking. Well, at least Crankshaft did his research. So just a quick follow-up <laughs> question. Even if you have uh, good certified uh, Eclipse glasses, my my thought is that still, especially for kids who have clearer lenses in their eyes than, than old guys like us so they can get more easily damaged, 
it's probably not a great idea to sit and stare at the sun for 10 minutes with those things, right? Even if you're wearing them, or is that okay? No, they're really, they're really made for short, short glimpses, okay. short intervals. I will say one thing, and somebody, I, this question has come up at several libraries more than a few times, and nobody seems to have been touching upon this, so let me touch upon it here. Somebody asked, if you're wearing the glasses and looking at the sun, you know, and oh, there it is, it's the, the sun and the eclipse, is it safe for you to take binoculars and put the binoculars oh. against the uh, against the glasses so you've got the you, you got the glasses over your eyes and then you put binoculars behind no don't do that because if you do that the binoculars are bringing the sun's light and heat and magnifying them in the binoculars and coming through the eyepiece and now that heat is now focused on the plastic in those glasses and those right. plastic, uh, lenses will melt very very quickly and if they melt while you're doing all of that, boom, you're immediately exposed to that brilliant sunlight, that magnified sunlight. If you're going to try to look at the sun uh, with, with filtering elements, what you should do is you should put the filters at the front of the binoculars before they have a chance to magnify the, mm. the, uh, the, or the intensity of the uh, sunlight. Put them in the front because if you put them where the eyepieces are, the, you're, in, you're asking for trouble because, again, th that ex intense heat behind the eyepiece could cause a problem with the uh, filters. They could melt that plastic, and, and that could you don't want that to happen while you're uh, looking at the sun with, uh, but, with but, those binoculars. But listeners, please, if you do try that, make sure they're affixed very solidly because if they fall off and you got those things up to your eyes, and the reason I keep ranting about this is, with as a kid with my little two inch refractor telescope with the screw in sun lens which was not up to snuff which is why i ended up damaging my eyes i once had the eyepiece out of it and my head passed by it with the eyepiece out while it was pointed at the sun and i got this whack of very intense light in my eyes and i couldn't see out of my right eye for about uh, eh, 20 minutes maybe so, you know, as, as Joe's saying, these things are, are magnifying and effectively becoming a death ray at that point. So you want to be very, very careful. I mean, ever, yeah. when you were a kid, you take, you, you take a, a magnifying glass like I have here, right? And you try to uh, start, you know, see if you can get a leaf to smoke. Or right. Whatever. Or even if you see a bunch of ants or whatever. <laughs> you, no. Don't do that. Right. Don't do that, <laughs> listeners. <laughs> the death ray, you know, like the, I mean, like this is just a simple magnifying glass. Can you imagine if you have like a 40 power eyepiece and magnifying the heat of the sun and that suddenly falls on the retina of your eye? Goodbye, eye. Mm. That's it. It's all yeah. over. And they don't grow so, back. Yeah. So what I've, I've been telling folks, um, Joe, you know, for the glass, because I actually, I bought some from Lunt Solar Systems. Uh, uh, Who we uh, like. You know, I went, I went, I went, I mean, I, I, I know that brand. I've spoken with them at, at the Northeast Astronomy Forum, Joe, that you and I both attend uh, each year. And uh, and I, I just went really quickly went to their storefront on Amazon because I trust that brand. I know that they're, that they, they have quality glasses um, or that they check to make sure that the ones on their store are quality. And, uh, and someone asked me, can I check at home? And I said, well, if you put them on at home and you can't see anything, you, you, you know, you're like, it's like totally dark. That's good. Even when you're looking at like the lamps in your, in your house, it's dark. You shouldn't be able to see like the pictures on the wall or whatnot. Only like the little dimness of the, the sun when you're looking at that is what would come through. And um, that's what I've been advising people if they really want to double check and be safe. Is, is, that, is there another test that you would advise people, Joe, to, to do if they want to double check their, their glasses? I think that's the that's the one and only uh, uh, chest test that you can uh, use to, you know, actually, uh, you're absolutely right. You cannot, you should not be able to see anything through those glasses, even if you're looking at a high-powered LED that's right in front of you. If you can mm -hmm. see that LED, uh, don't, don't use those glasses. Um, people have come up to me and they said, well, I've got a pair of sunglasses, Joe. They're really dark. Oh, God. I mean, I'm, sure I'm sure I could look at the sun through those glasses. And you know what? You probably can. But the problem is that you're not just dealing with the, 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 the visible light. You're dealing with also the ultraviolet and the infrared rays. The right. ultraviolet rays are the things that give you a sunburn after 15 or 20 minutes. And the infrared acts uh, to help to melt the snow on your driveway or on streets and highways. <laughs> Uh, by, by interacting with the blacktop. You don't want those rays hitting you and, and, uh, or hitting your eye. And indeed, while you are diminishing the light of the sun, those infrared and ultraviolet rays are coming straight through the sunglasses and your eyes don't have pain receptors. They cannot sense that your eyes are being burned by those infrared and ultraviolet rays. So your eyes are being burned while you, you don't know it. And maybe not immediately after the eclipse, 
But a day or two later, you're walking around and say, you know, why is it I don't see a, I see a, like a black spot over there. Or is that a black spot uh, over there? That's yeah, it. Yeah. That Those are the burns that you, uh, and you know what? It might even be uh, not a circular spot. It might be a crescent spot because that's oh, no. the crescent sun. You'll have a permanent, you'll have a permanent record on your retina of the eclipse that, uh, that you, that you watched. Not okay, every, so everybody, the message here is proceed with caution, use sparingly, and don't stare at the sun. And as I mentioned earlier, there are other, you know, if you want to see the partial eclipse and are outside the path of totality, you can hold up your fist and make a little pinhole that'll kind of project down on the sidewalk. You can go under a tree. If it's got smaller leaves, you'll see hundreds of little partial suns down there. That's what those dappled spots spots are under a tree when you're under full sunlight. You can even use a colander. I'm bringing a, a metal yes. colander. Yes. You can even use a Ritz cracker or a saltine cracker. <laughs> well, there you go. All right. And, and we're going to be. Holes. They have holes in them. You can hold it, take the cracker, hold the uh, a, a white sheet of paper or cardboard two or three feet away from the cracker. You got multiple images of the eclipse going on on the uh, on, on your on your cardboard that courtesy of the cracker. Hey, if you enjoyed this clip, be sure to check out This Week in Space. You can find us on your favorite podcast app or see the link in the description below. See you there. <laughs>